Welcome to part two, looking into the life of Daisy Greville, the mistress of King Edward VII. In the corridors of power and amidst the glittering lights of high society, a tale unfolds of compromise, passion and scandal. As the Prince of Wales negotiates with Daisy Greville, a spirited woman unwilling to yield to social dictates, tensions rise, friendships fracture and love triangles unravel revealing the intricate web of relationships that define their world. The Prince of Wales successfully negotiated the return of Daisy Greville's incriminating letter from Lady Charles, but with a significant condition attached. Daisy must abstain from London for the entire social season. However, the spirited Daisy adamantly refused this demand, unwilling to sacrifice her penchant for revelry for the sake of a letter. Recognising Daisy's determination, the prince, rather than insisting on compliance, redirected his displeasure towards Lady Charles. With Daisy steadfastly refusing to forego the social season, the Prince of Wales issued a warning to both Lord Beresford and Lady Charles. He cautioned that any scandal sparked by Daisy's letter would spell ruin for their social standing. Shocked by the prince's severity, Lord Beresford's emotions erupted, leading to a confrontation where he forcefully pushed the prince into a nearby sofa, revealing the depth of his frustration and anger. In the course of resolving Daisy's predicament, romantic feelings blossomed between her and the Prince of Wales. As their affair intensified, the prince's friendship with Lord Beresford disintegrated, clouded by a mutual desire for Daisy. Daisy revelled in her newfound connection with the prince, signalling her affection through a grand gesture. Desiring more frequent encounters with the Prince of Wales, without arousing suspicion, Daisy devised a clever solution, a private railway station constructed near her residence. This clandestine haven facilitated discreet rendezvous, shielding their affair from prying eyes. However, as their passion grew, Daisy's heedlessness invited looming consequences. As the affair between Daisy and the prince continued, secrecy became burdensome, prompting public appearances together. While Albert Edward's wife initially tolerated Daisy's discreet presence, her tolerance waned as their liaison became increasingly conspicuous. The escalating gossip surrounding Daisy's romantic entanglements tarnished her once pristine reputation. Another scandal rocked the Marlborough House set, this time involving accusations of cheating, not in matters of infidelity, but at the card table. The Prince of Wales penchant for Barricat, an illicit gambling game, culminated in an infamous dispute where Sir William Gordon Cumming faced allegations of foul play. Unsurprisingly, Daisy found herself embroiled in the ensuing controversy, her presence adding fuel to the already raging fire. Speculations ran rampant regarding the informant who exposed Sir Gordon Cummings' card cheating scandal, with Daisy Greville's penchant for gossip making her the prime suspect. As the scandal unfolded in court, the media bestowed upon Daisy a distinctive moniker, dubbing her the Babbling Brook, due to her marriage to Lord Brook. However, the depth of this scandal extended far beyond mere card games. Despite her ongoing liaison with the prince, Daisy's infidelity reached new heights when the prince unexpectedly discovered her in the arms of another man, none other than Sir Gordon Cumming. Daisy's betrayal extended not only to her husband, but also to her clandestine lover, revealing the complexities of her romantic entanglements and the consequences of her actions. The naming of Daisy's first child, Leopold, bore curious significance, given its shared name with her former suitor. Whether a deliberate affront or a peculiar coincidence, Daisy's unconventional tendencies reflected in her choice of names, adding another layer to her enigmatic persona. Following the birth of her daughter, Marjorie Blanche, Daisy disclosed a startling revelation. Francis Greville was not Marjorie's biological father. This revelation hinted at Daisy's clandestine affairs 
and the complexities of her romantic liaisons, shedding light on the true paternity of her children and unravelling long-held family secrets. In a 1923 confession, Daisy divulged that Lord Charles Beresford, a charismatic Navy man and politician, fathered her second child. Beresford's public persona and close association with Daisy underscored the intensity of their relationship, revealing yet another chapter in Daisy's complex romantic history. While entwined in a passionate affair with Prince Albert Edward, Daisy's romantic escapades took another turn with her involvement with the millionaire Joseph Laycock. Despite Laycock's casual approach to relationships, Daisy found herself drawn into a whirlwind romance, risking her heart in pursuit of fleeting excitement. As her entanglements multiplied, Daisy found herself navigating treacherous waters where love and desire collided with scandal and consequence. Amid Daisy's fervent affair with Laycock, he found himself entangled in a passionate liaison with Catherine Mary Hare, nicknamed Kitty. Kitty faced divorce proceedings initiated by her husband due to her involvement with Laycock, refusing to release him from the consequences of their affair. Ultimately, Laycock opted to marry Kitty, considering Daisy already had a husband. Despite this, Daisy's ardour for Laycock persisted, leaving the fate of their affair uncertain or so it seemed. Laycock's decision to wed Kitty didn't signal a sudden commitment to monogamy. Daisy and Laycock continued their passionate liaison, unabated by marriage. Moreover, Laycock's marital status didn't deter him either from fathering yet another child of Daisy, adding to her brood of four living children. For those keeping score, one offspring from her husband, one from Beresford and two from Laycock. With each new addition to her unconventional family, Daisy's reputation garnered increasing scrutiny from critics. Robert Blatchford, a journalist and author, criticised Daisy's extravagant lifestyle in scathing prose. His critique targeted her astacious consumption, contrasting it with the poverty and suffering prevalent in society. Incensed by his words, Daisy stormed into his office, demanding an immediate apology. Instead of receiving an apology, Daisy found herself engaged in an unexpected exchange of ideas with the journalist. Embracing his socialist ideologies, Daisy engaged in numerous discussions with him, absorbing his teachings with avid interest. Using the knowledge gained, she lined with another journalist and she embarked on campaigns for education, poverty alleviation and women's rights. Her advocacy extended to promoting women's access to education and employment opportunities. Yet, despite her altruistic pursuits, Daisy's lavish lifestyle depleted her finances, teetering her on the brink of financial ruin. Despite these hardships, Daisy's love for spending persisted, starkly contrasting her dedication to social change. Join me in part three to delve into the intricate web of Daisy Greville's life as we uncover her reliance on royal favour and possession of potent knowledge. We'll explore her daring pursuit of financial salvation, culminating in an unexpected offers and striking bargains that reshape her narrative. From scandalous revelations to literary pursuits, Daisy's journey unfolds against the backdrop of societal upheaval and personal turmoil offering a poignant glimpse into the complexities of Edwardian society.